he is the president and CEO at Owen Electric. And he is also the, um, he's spearheading our uh, task force for making Owen County a work-ready community. Um, I really felt like this was something that visionaries would want to know about because it is a part of helping us transform the local economy, bring up the level of education and uh, employability of people in our community. And, um, and that is really what we're all about as far as the, the process of making Owen County what we uh, envision it to be. So um, he'll tell you some stuff about himself, I'm sure. And uh, with no further ado, Mark Stadden. It's good to be here. It was a good effort for me to walk through. Anytime you develop a PowerPoint, you typically learn more than what you thought you were going to learn. Uh, we've been at this effort for for several several months, really a year, to be honest about it. Uh, I hate to admit that because that seems like a long time, and we probably ought to be farther along than we are. But uh, one thing you learn is patience. Patience is a, uh, is a very good thing to have, especially when you're dealing with small groups in local area, small area. Uh, getting the inertia, getting the critical mass to move and building that is, is typically more critical than, uh, than trying to launch it before you're really ready to launch. Uh, you may be wondering what is the workforce task Work Ready Task Force. It's really a state effort. And what I did was I took these points right off of, of our uh, of the PowerPoint, or actually the website, that, uh, that they have developed for us. And it's really a, a state effort to try to improve skills, uh, job readiness of our youth, adults, uh, so that we can claim or take the tag of being work ready and use that to market ourselves to people that bring jobs to Kentucky, rural America. And we're competing globally, we're competing uh, nationally. It used to be nationally, but let's be honest, it's really global today. Um, a great question is what kind of jobs do you think Owen County really could have? I mean, there's some people that are concerned and want to keep uh, what we have, uh, but want to augment with jobs. Uh, and I think part of it, there's a reality that, that we don't have an interstate coming through here. Uh, we're 10 to 20, 30 miles from uh, 71, depending on what part of the county you're in. Uh, 20 to 30 miles from 75, depending upon what part of the county you're in. Uh, today, we're probably more residential than we are anything else. A rural farm ag, but even that's been changing in the 20 years. The nature of our agricultural economy is changing. So it's real interesting to try to benchmark, and what you're going to see is there's a lot of benchmarks here. There's a, a set of criteria that they want us to meet, and then the question is, where are we? And then the question is, what's the gap? And then the next question is, what are you going to do about it? And so I will kind of walk through this. Uh, the first thing I always ask is why. Uh, if I'm going to donate my time, and many times I find that I've donated my time more than I should, and I'm sure all of you are like that as well. In fact, I know you all are. And I know many of you in, in this room. Uh, but you have to ask why? Why would I? Why should we do this? What's What's the purpose? What's the reason? There's got to be an overarching reason. Otherwise, what's this all about? Uh, there's really, the first one I, I put up there is continuous skill improvement. And the reason I put that up there is this is not going to be a one year, two year done. This is going to be long term. And it's continuous. And it's really getting a mindset and a culture and a community that works together to ensure that this happens. And continually adapts and revises plans and action items and partnerships to achieve this. So uh, I don't want anybody to think 18 months from now, shit, we're all done. Because it's, it's not going to be that way. It just isn't. And I think once you see the numbers, you're going to understand. Uh, and uh, the next
next one is we're going to transform the local economy. Now we could scare the whole room with that statement right there. Because <laughs> you know the next question is, well, how do you want to transform it? Well, this group isn't determining how we want to transform it in terms of what jobs look like. What we're trying to do is transform the workforce so they're educated and so they're ready. Quite honestly, this community is going to determine what businesses come here. But uh, the one thing this group is concerned about, not really the economic development side, but it's getting our community, our people, students, young adults, everybody prepared for work, being work ready. So the transformation probably is more within than it is transforming what it looks like or anything from that nature. Gain a competitive advantage. Most businesses uh, today are really looking at a geographical area that has, ta has a talented workforce, period. Because they can go anywhere and everywhere. They can go to Charlotte, they can go overseas, they can go to St. Louis, they can go wherever. Uh, it's a global marketplace. So you gotta have some com competitive advantage and if you don't have a workforce that, that has skill sets, then you may just not even make the cut list or the short list. Um, attracting new business and jobs. I mean, the reality is jobs. I mean, jobs are key. Uh, so that's really the why, the purpose. BHAG, if anybody wants to know what BHAG is, that comes from James Collins. He's wrote a bunch of books, Built to Last. Uh, BHAG is a big, hairy, audacious goal. So uh, I like to say it, but most people look at you like, oh, that's, that's a strange one. Yeah, you can skip on that. But we'll see if this okay. The how? How are we going to do this? Um, I stole strategic alignment right out of the letter of intent. That's my my normal operating procedure is to read something and then steal as much as I can, and then share it with other people. Uh, strategic alignment. Well, what does that mean? means we all want to focus on what the goals are and we want to get a bunch of people together and we want to all be pulling the same way instead of pulling in four or five different ways. So who do we want to get together to help do this, to help become a work-ready community? Education people, elected officials, business industry people, economic development people, workforce development people. So we pulled together a task force and this is all volunteer. And quite honestly, it, uh, it's people that said yes. And we didn't really ask a lot of people uh, uh, initially, but quite honestly, to get this thing going, we're going to have to have a lot of people. Okay? The task force is really um, just, to, just to get the thought process going. Uh, but we have people from the education, Ann Klein, Dwayne Klein, Veronica, uh, also adult ed. And quite honestly, those three pieces are key. In fact, the school system is, is, uh, is probably the biggest key to the, to the solution. Uh, one of many, not the only, but uh, you have to have a, a true partnership of everybody and engagement from everybody, otherwise you, you're just kind of spinning the wheels and throwing mud. Uh, Carol and Keith really started it and came and talked to a bunch of us, talked to me, and talked to other people. She was the person who spearheaded it. Don Davis from ITRON, uh, Missy Moore on electric, myself on electric, uh, Judy Henderman uh, from the County Extension, Frank Downing, Ec Economic Development, and then uh, Barbara Stewart, this Northern Kentucky Workforce Development Representative. And uh, she is really a necessary person because she, uh, basically told us where the website is and, and she's the holder of all the information and the knowledge base and she's our link to other counties who, are, who have successfully already applied and become a work ready community. And quite honestly, uh, we do what all smart people do. We take their work, we read it, and we adapt to us. What fits, what doesn't fit, what works, what wouldn't work. Uh, but it's a way of brainstorming and generating ideas, so we've got a model, a template to basically work from. So there's several criteria, uh, benchmarks, metrics, whatever you want to call them. The first one is graduation rate, and the 
standard, the metric would be 82.32%. Uh, and what I did this morning that I hadn't really quite done, I knew that Owen County's number was in the high 70s. But that's all I knew. I didn't know 78, 77, what is it? In 2012, it was 79.6, okay? Now, if I go back to 2008, it was in the high 60s. So from 68 to 2012, it's, it's come up a long way, okay? So there's good things going on. Now, the other thing you have to realize is that number changes with every graduating class. So just because you're at 79.6 doesn't mean you're not going to be 78 next year. Or, you know, but you want to look over uh, over a period of time, and that's going to tell you what's going on, because their classes are different. You say required criteria, required for what? Uh, to be a work-ready community. Yeah, you basically, if you're at 82.32, you would be designated as a work-ready community. If you're below that, I forget the word they call it, say it. It's like you're on your way, you're progressing, you're, and that's not the word. But there's another word that, that, that they use uh, uh, that you're working toward becoming a work ready community. So that's the goal here is to become designated <clears throat> up in the corner there, a work ready community. Right. Okay. Right. Yep. And, and there's certain benchmarks you need to meet. The graduation rate is one of those benchmarks, and we're roughly three points, give or take a couple decimal points. So, uh, but we've come a long way. Mm -hmm. So then does that change every year? Let's say you got certified as a work ready community and then the next year your graduation rate was 80%. Is, is there some time frame in there that? You know, I don't, I've never asked that question and that's a great question. The way I look at this, they just want us all to start on the path of continuous improvement. And my, read is that they're flexible and they want to see continuous improvement. I would say if, if, a, if a community, my guess would be, is if a community has achieved the status and it slips one year, they're not going to worry too much, if, if, but, if, but they're going to want to see continuous improvement. But the reality is the task force, the group that continues to work on this, would be concerned. So the question would be what action plan, you know, or do we need to do an action plan? But there would be a dialogue between the education, the business leaders, the community leaders uh, to see, you know, should we do something different? Is it not working? What are we missing? So it's really like any type of uh, organization. You set a benchmark and you measure yourself to that. And you develop action plans to get yourself there and then you want to stay there or improve. Or you want to go to 90% so you've got uh, some room to slip. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of ways to play this. I look at it more as a continuous improvement process as a, as a oh good, we can, we can stop now. We can quit doing this. Uh, because you're, I don't think you're going to quit, quite honestly. Once you get it going, it's something we need to continually keep together. And I think the best part of it is getting everybody working together. To me, that's the real benefit of this whole uh, initiative. Because the reality is we haven't been doing that in the past. So, so that's one of the metrics. The next one is national career readiness, and we have the expert on that subject sitting right back there. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous and, and enough to get it on the top, which I think I've hopefully done well. But uh, we, this is probably our biggest, well, numerically from the criteria, this is one of our biggest challenges. It's one of the metrics they use. Uh, and it's 9% uh, within three years. And then they want you to be at 15% within five years. We are at 1.32%. Now, the reason we're at 1.32% is because we've never given the test to anybody, quite honestly, in the county. Give or take, people that go through adult ed take this test to prepare themselves. Or, uh, I, mean, I'll, I mean, I'll let you explain that. I mean, I know you give the... the I give the test to everybody who's getting ready to take the GED. Um, and basically, for two reasons. One, to get them uh, more prepared for that 
testing process, but also it, they get a certificate and it comes in degrees, silver, gold, platinum. And the objective is if you have the National Career Readiness Certificate, it just helps you get a job because more and more uh, employers are looking at it. So it tells an employer where your skill level is. You know, just having a um, uh, high school diploma or a college degree or whatever, doesn't necessarily tell them what your skill level is in um, reading for information, locating information, and applied mathematics. Those are the three areas that they, um, that they judge. And, um, Basically, it just tells people where we are. So all of my students who are getting ready to take the GED take the um, NCRC before they go to test. But that's not very many people compared to the whole workforce. So I went on the website, and here's basically what they had. In Owen County, we have 6,608 working age people from age 18 to 65. Uh, the 9% that was on the prior slide. The 9% target within three years would be 595 uh, people. The 15 would be 991. We have 87. And those are probably 87 people that have gone through uh, the adult ed. Okay, that's probably what it is. Um, and that's why it's 1.32. So I don't believe it's an indicator of, our, of, of where our skill sets are. I think it's just an indicator that we just really have to promote the test. Who, who would make that? Uh, well, one of the strategies we've got to come up with, in fact, it's the one that I'm drafting the narrative on, is, is you know, we've got a lot of people who can probably pass the different sections of the test. It's, there's three work key assessments. And I put that on this slide. There's a reading for in, information session section, there's an applied mathematics section. Now that would be the section that could be the most challenging, possibly, depending upon where people's skill sets are. Takes you back into fractions and all kinds of good stuff that will twist your head a little bit. Uh, locating in information is another skill set. Uh, so one of the ways we <coughs> talked about would be, uh, would Owen Electric be willing to take a group of its employees and put them through the, the program? day training session, we take the test and you know, we got 30 or 40 more people. Uh, I don't know that I could talk 30 or 40, you know. Uh, you know, when you tell people, you know, we're going to have a test and we're going to test you, I mean, people kind of pucker up.
it's getting a commitment from the community to show that you've got engagement from all these different areas. And we pretty well, we've done that. Okay, that's that really is the easiest one. Educational attainment, we're at 21.8%. This would be uh, people who have a two-year degree. Okay. Uh, 25 is the target. Uh, then 32 within three years. That 32% is the Kentucky average. That's the statewide average. Uh, the national average, U.S. average, is 39. So that's the target within five years. Now, the three and five year target, do you have to do it within three or five years? No, we have asked that question. And the answer we've gotten is we want to see continuous improvement. This is more about improvement than it is, you know, hitting that number. Because are, are we realistically going to go from 22% to 39 in five years? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, but can we go from 21 to 26, 27 in five years? I don't know. But that's part of the thing. That's why this is really a continuous improvement plan. The other thing that is, is a bit revealing is where we are compared to the rest of the state on average and where we are compared to the nation on average. So when you see the gap, uh, I think that's a motivational effort to, yeah, we probably need to do something together. So we have 22% with a two-year degree. Or greater. Or more greater. More and more. And that number comes right off of the state website. I went there this morning and pulled the number off. And then called Barbara up and said, did I do this right? <laughs> but, uh, uh, the next one is educational attainment. Uh, and you know, we've been playing with this for a year and I didn't, I didn't, uh, I hadn't, this one didn't dawn on me yet. <coughs> we haven't talked about it much. Uh, Judy's in the group and Veronica, and we really haven't spent a lot of time on this one. Uh, but it's there. <laughs> it's one of the criteria. I covered with the barber this morning. I said, I, I didn't catch that one. You know, how did I miss that one? But it's there. Must decrease the percent without high school degree by 3% within three years, 5% within five. And again, those are guidelines and targets. They're not written in stone, so to speak. Uh, and we are, I believe we were 14-something percent. And so they, they the, the website, and I printed off everything if anybody's curious, uh, gives you what the number is, because it was 6,600 and something working age between 18 and 64. So uh, they know what the number is, and I think we're 14.9% or something like that. So we would have to decrease that by 200 working age people to get the 3%, we'd have to decrease it by 333% to get a 5% uh, gain or decrease in, in that uh, number. And that's basically what Veronica is all about. Okay? That's why she's on the team. That's why she's on the task force. We needed her input. Soft skills program. This is probably, I've hired a lot of smart people. But you know what I value more than smart? Soft skills. Because I've, I've seen a lot of smart people that don't have this, and they end up not being a lot of money. Because they're fighting, or they're whatever, they're angry, they're unhappy, whatever the case may be. But soft skills are huge. Uh, attendance, punctuality, communication, teamwork, <laughs> leadership, critical thinking. And so what they ask is that we have a program to develop smart soft skills. So quite honestly, this one is a bit nebulous. It's a little bit gray. It's a little fuzzy. There's a lot of latitude to it. There's no set percent or benchmark on this. They just want to see that you've got a plan, a way to develop this. So quite honestly, that's a dialogue with your high school. Your middle school. What are you all doing to help develop soft skills? Dialogue with your two-year colleges. Uh, dialogue with your with your businesses. You know, what's Owen Electric doing to help them develop soft skills? Um, and that can then go into a narrative. And so we're all talking about it. We're all working together to try to make sure we have soft skills. 
So uh, the rest of it, I kind of probably covered that a little bit. If you look at uh, the soft skill program, it needs to show employer engagement. So the major employers would need to be involved in it and have an in input and participating in it. Uh, part of the hiring advance process. Okay. If there's uh, uh, measurable goals, well, that would be an interesting thing. Uh, and somehow we'll have, we'll have to figure out how we're going to measure this. But that's why we've got smart people on the task force that are in education. A big, uh, a big adder to our team, quite honestly, is Diane Ann Klein. Because she brings years of experience in, in this area. Uh, her, and her title is Counselor of uh, Career Readiness at the uh, high school. And I didn't get the title quite right, but I'm close. And so uh, this is part of uh, getting students and young adults ready for a job career. Internet availability. Now you that are on the team, you will remember that we have been saying we had a 90% number, 93 or something. And we all said, baloney, fooey, we don't believe it. And we went to the website, and yeah, that's what it said. I went to the website today, and then I called Barbara Stewart up, our Northern Kentucky Workforce Development Coordinator. And I said, Barbara, I need to take you to this website, because I need you to tell me, did I look at the right place, and am I pulling this number from the right location? Is this accurate? Because the number I got today was 75.9%. And they're actually on this website. You can set it up for 3 megabytes, 6 megabytes, 10 megabytes, or I think 25 was another one. And at 25, we're at 33%. Okay. So the more megabytes you're asking for, the lower availability you have. But we thought we were at 90, but we're at 70, what, 76 roughly. We need to be at 90. Um, so we didn't really think we were going to have much of a narrative on this, but we're going to have a narrative on this now. Because the question is, how are we going to raise 76 to 90 percent? Mark, is that via like a traditional service, like a cable company or DSL? Does that count like mobile devices like cell phones? They are looking at every okay. avenue, uh, how many different providers. Okay. And that's a really good question, because that's changed with the advent of the smartphone. Because right. if you look like a place like Japan or Norway or something like yeah. that, where there's lots of mountains and it's rural, the infrastructure to provide the internet access is a cell phone. It's not the traditional route we look at in the United States. So I was just curious whether that number includes mobile devices. They had a map that I printed off today. And it's, it's hard to see. But it basically, the... Uh, the blue is where this was this was for three megabytes and above. And the blue is those areas that have three megabytes. This is Cincinnati. This is Lexington. This is Louisville. Frankfurt's kind of right in here. And guess where that is? The wide area. Yeah. Now you want to know where Owenton is? Owenton's right there. See that blue? Yeah. And that there, to me, I'm guessing that's Elk, Elk Lake. Now, I don't know, but I'm just guessing. Because that's where 22 and 127 come together. And, but that's a real interesting map. We got, we got uh, uh, 10 million Elk Lake, we got 10 million at Cape Park. Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, we're going to want to. This group, the task force, is going to want to sit down with the local internet providers and, and talk. <coughs> um, and quite, you know, it, it's, it, and you, Bob, Ron and I had, we had discussions before. I mean, it always comes down, and it really doesn't matter whether we're talking internet availability, um, but it, it always comes down to resources. Well, I was going to say, available is one thing, but affordability is another. I mean, it, just because, depending on where you live, and I experienced this, and I live just above Monterey. I'm not totally in the movies, but, um, but we had that wild blue thing at one point. Oh, and yeah. I actually got out of my contract because it was so bad. Yeah. I mean, 
we paid a penalty. So, I mean, you could say, well, that was available to me. And you hear all these ads for HughesNet, and, but availability and actual functionality and affordability, I just said, I'm done. I can't deal with it anymore. It was so bad. Yeah, they are two different things. And you've picked up on the key word there. This is measuring availability. Mm -hmm. So, if you're at 76% available, you know, what's... what's Who's participating? Yeah. So, and, and when we had this discussion in our task force, we knew that 90%, you know, wasn't quite, uh, we just knew from, the, from talking to people that it just wasn't accurate. So, uh, now we have a better metric. Is it perfect? Is any metric ever perfect? You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's the best information we have at present. So uh, my guess is this number will be continually changing. Your, uh, your question on smartphones is an excellent. Mm -hmm. That could be a positive that we're not seeing. Yeah, because, because a lot of younger people are accessing the internet through their mobile device. Yeah. And so. G4 and all that is expanding mm -hmm. faster than we can yeah. keep up with it. Which is part of the reason it's difficult for a small provider to get out there and push mm -hmm. and put a bunch of money in. And then somebody come up and put a tower and boom, now you're competing at a price point you may not be able to survive at. So there's a lot of risk. Pardon? We also have a lot of risk around here. Right. It is yeah. getting into spots that should really darken a lot more than we got as far as possibility. Yeah, I, you know, I, my house, I've got about 14 meg megabyte availability. That's just because I'm about the only one out there, and there's a dish up on a grain elevator. You're hogging the bandwidth. <laughs> I'm sucking all the bandwidth. You know? so I got all three of the Netflix and everything. I'm wondering when that day is going to happen. When a neighbor builds a house and somebody says, I want the same thing, and he says, Well, I got the dish right up there. It loves me, Bill. I'll just, you can pick up that one. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's broadly, you know, I get it, it he shoots it right down uh, uh, Eagle Creek, yeah. and right down Fort Garridge, and that's where I'm at, so, so you know, some of us are, you know, fortunate, but I, I knew Dave, and I said, hey Dave, can you give me the internet to my, to my house, and so he did, but, uh, so yeah, we're going to have a challenge there as well, and that, my, quite honestly, is going to probably be one of our bigger if not the biggest challenge. I thought the NC National Career Readiness would be, a, and that is a big challenge as well, but this one's going to be, I think, big as well. So here are the five different narratives that basically the task force is drafting. Uh, the first one is National Career Readiness, um, and that was uh, the, the, the work keys and the tests, and we're at like 1%. The second one is really the easiest one. Uh, that's mainly just getting everybody together and proving we're working together. Uh, educational attainment, uh, we're close, you know, 79 to 82. We've got some work to do there. Soft skills is probably one of the easier ones, I would think. I mean, it's just doing it and getting together and working together and coordinating and putting a plan and program in action. Internet availability will be will be a challenge just due to capital, unless Verizon, AT&T, and other big boys flood us. But you know, they, they, they flood where the market is. Uh, your local providers are, are going to be, and we've got two of them, yeah, two of them, are really dependent on funding. Uh, so, uh, so the graduation rate is one of the five minutes. It's dovetailed in educational attainment. And that's what we've been working for a year. Uh, we've assigned tasks. We've gathered in, in, in information. We started writing drafts. Um, 11 and 10 has been drafted, but, but it hasn't been sent in yet. We're real close to <coughs> uh, We're really, today's the first time we've really taken the story outside of the task force. Uh, so uh, we really have not 
And, and we're really not ready to, quite honestly. I think we need to get the narratives finished. Uh, one of the things we're talking about doing is once we get the narratives to share those with the other counties of, uh, it used to be called the I-71 quarter, but that's an old name. It's the Economic Development Group for Carroll, Gallatin, Owen, Henry, Trimble, and we all in there. Uh, because many of their industries are the same ones that employ a lot of people in Owen County. Mm -hmm. So it's much easier for us to go to Nass or to go to Gallatin or go to any of the businesses along the river if we've got a group uh, in a group of counties, five of us, uh, and just one county. Uh, there is completed uh, and then uh, put forth our ap application. And typically what would happen is uh, they will approve, they'll look at your plans, uh, they'll approve it. Uh, and, I, and I don't remember if it's an in-progress status, maybe that's what they call it. You get an in-progress status if you haven't attained all the criteria. And so our goal would be to get an in-progress status have viable plans, show that we're improving along the way. And uh, I see it as a long-term effort, not a short-term effort. And there may be some of these that end up, you know, if you can't get the internet availability to 90% quickly, then that's no reason not to get the rest. You know, you do everything you can. And, uh, but even on that, I think there's things we can do. Q&A, any questions? Do you know where other counties are? Uh, are? Are there any work-ready communities in the city? There's a, what, five, six? Maybe mm -hmm. somewhere in the five, six, six range. And it may be more than that. Um, the model we were using was Russell County. Those were the narratives we, we had downloaded. And we were using those. It was the one that was the most represented, representative of us about a year ago. In the past year, several others have have applied for it. Uh, and on the website, you can go and take a look and, and you can see, and I should have given you the website, uh, but if you do the Workforce Investment Board, uh, and <coughs> Work Ready Communities, you'll find it. And uh, you can see what counties have applied and, and are in progress and which ones <coughs> achieved Work Ready. Uh, it's a minority. Uh, we are the only one in Northern Kentucky. We were the first one in Northern Kentucky. We would start talking 